We're going to look at two very special right triangles. Now, the truth is, is they even have special as their name. And that's going to obviously mean to us that um, these guys aren't trivial items. Um, the stuff you'll learn today will be used many times within this course and many, many times after this course. So this is a very important lesson to kind of pick up on. So we're going to find two very unique triangles. The first unique triangle we're going to find is that if you cut a square in half. Now two identical triangles are formed, uh, this guy here and then this guy here. And what we know about this triangle is that it would be a what we call a 45-45-90 triangle. And you can see where that comes from. This, this guy gets split in half. This guy is an angle bisector, and there's your 90. So the first guy we learn about is notated as the 45-45-90. And we'll look at some characteristics of it, but I think one of the characteristics you know right away is that there will always be in this guy two congruent sides. It'll always be a right isosceles triangle. Very important knowledge. So let's take a look at um, one of these guys. Let's bring it up here. And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the relationship between the, the physical lengths of the sides. So this, these lengths as well as this hypotenuse length. And to do that, we're going to do a couple of calculations. So as mentioned, the first thing to notice with 45-45s is that there will always be two equal sides. So whatever one is, the other one is, they'll always be equal to their partner. Now what's a little more interesting is what's the relationship to the hypotenuse in each of these cases. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick little Pythagorean theorem and to see what is that hypotenuse. And we're going to use it using our radical notation. You'll see what I mean. Let's go through what we know. Let's start with the far left. So we take 6 and square it because of the Pythagorean theorem. We get 36 and 36 makes 72. We take the square root of 72. Now this is partly why you and I did some review on this. The square root of 36 and then we just get 6 root 2. So please pay attention to what actually that just did back here. We had a side of 6, a side of 6, and the hypotenuse was 6 root 2. Let's look at um, our friend here with the sides of 2. So it would go 2 squared plus 2 squared, so that's 4 plus 4, which is the square root of 8 when we're done. When we divide that out, we get 2 square root of 2. So, can you tell what's happening here? Do you see the patterns? 2, 2, and 2 square root of 2. Let's continue that pattern. Let's go take a look at our guy down here. 10 squared plus 10 squared equals 100 and 100, which is the 200 or the square root of 200. And out comes the 100, and we get 10 root 2. This is quite messy, so let me clean it up for a second. With all the work away, we can see a nice little pattern here. This business of 6, 6, and 6 root 2. 10, 10, and 10 root 2. 2, 2, and 2 root 2. So we're seeing a relationship between the two sides. They'll always be equal. And we're seeing that the side times root 2 gives us the hypotenuse each time. That a leg times root 2 gives us that. So let's summarize that. So the way that, the way that would summarize itself is between these two sides you will always get an equal relationship. Between a leg and the hypotenuse you'll always multiply by root 2. I don't want you to think that the hypotenuse always has a root 2. What it does have is it's times root 2 of any of the legs. Now it is correct that if the leg was 10 then it is 10 root 2. But I'll show you some examples where that doesn't happen but make sure you understand that that relationship is times the square root of 2. Let's tuck that into a corner here and then let's uh, let's use that information to solve some problems. Alright, these have to be equal, quite obvious, and then we multiply by root 2 to get here. So yes, 
In this case, that would be just simply 12 root 2. In this case, I want you to notice we know the hypotenuse. So to go backwards to the short side, we're going to divide by the square root of 2. And again, this is a bit why you and I reviewed this previously. We just get a side of 8. So, so far, again, nice and easy uh, in terms of the values, and most of them are. Here again, we are given the hypotenuse, and if you're going in between these sides, you're either multiplying by root 2 or dividing by root 2, and so we would get 3 and 3. These are the very simple cases and should be done quickly. Start to pay attention now some of the relationships. So this has a side of 7 root 3, which makes this side 7 root 3. Now, this is a good example where the hypotenuse doesn't have a root 2 in it. We multiply by root 2, and so our answer at this level would be 7 square root of 3. Remember, you and I uh, reviewed the fact that it would be the 3 times the 2 to give us the 6 answer. Let's take a look at this one. Interesting. So our sides are indeed equal, which they have to be. And then we're going to multiply by the square root of 2, which would be 2 square root of 16. But you know what that is. That's 2 times 4. And in this case, guess what? Our hypotenuse is the 8. What I need you to get away from is assuming that the hypotenuse always has a root 2 on it. All we know is that we multiply by root 2 to obtain answers. Let's do one last one in this group. This is again a hypotenuse, and so if we're going back to the side, we are dividing by root 2. Now, you should know what this is. Again, through a little review, we got the square root of 4, which is simply 2. This is a 2, and this is a 2. So I need you to um, get away from the idea that it's root 2 on the hypotenuse. What I do need you to understand is that uh, what you are doing is you're either multiplying by root 2 to go this way or you're dividing by root 2 to go this way. And these guys will always be equal. Let's take a look now at the trickier variety of this group. All right. So actually this one isn't too bad. Here's our hypotenuse. And to get to a side, either of them, they'll be the same. We're going to divide by the square root of 2. And that is just simply 5 root 3 and 5 root 3. I want you to get away from the, the idea that these are always integers and the one's always got a root 2. The key is you're either multiplying by root 2 or dividing by root 2 to move through these guys. Let's look at this one. All right, here we go. This is why we reviewed division by a radical. This would be going this way would be 8 divided by root 2. Now, you and I know that the way we do this is we rationalize that denominator, which would be 8 root 2 over the square root of 4, but that would be 8 root 2 over 2, and so we get 4 square root of 2. No root 2 on it now is the sides. Do not get hung up on that root 2 is always on the hypotenuse. Is the key to remembering and doing these is that you are either multiplying or you are dividing by that square root. Let's do one more of this type. And so this uh, going this way again would be to divide by root 2. So it's 6 divided by root 2. The plan of how to do this is 6 root 2 over 2. I'm going to just kind of do that quickly. And our answer would be 3 root 2. Let's take a look at the other special triangle. The second special triangle is, is made by cutting a, a, an equilateral in half. And so you get two identical triangles. This one's called the 30, 60, 90 for good reason. Um, because when you cut that, that became a 30. We already knew this was 60. And this, of course, becomes 90. Now, one of the things that we know immediately, kind of like we knew about the square, is we know a relationship between these two sides. We have names for this. Of course, this is the hypotenuse that's here. This is known as the short leg, and this is known as the long leg. And just strictly by their size, the long leg will be across from the 60, the short leg will be across from the 30. 
Now, what we know is that the relationship here is times 2. Why would we know that? Let me take some of this coloring off for a second. Do you remember that this is an equilateral? And what that means is the sides are all the same. And so uh, if we were to cut one in half by doing this, this guy would exactly be half of that guy. So like the square, we have a nice little relationship of double or half going on there. Um, and in this case, the square was times root 2 or divide by root 2. In this case, it's times 2 or divide by 2. And what we now need is to know the relationship going this way as well. So let's investigate that. So here are three 30, 60, 90 triangles. I want you to notice that two of the sides have already been kind of decided for us. And that's because we know that the hypotenuse will always be double one of the sides, the short side. And so they all look like this. This is a wonderful, easy relationship of double or half. Now, the next side is a little more interesting in terms of its relationship. In the first case, we would say 6 squared equals 3 squared plus x squared. We'll solve that in a minute. In the next case, it would be 2 squared equals 1 squared plus x squared. And in this case, it would be 8 squared equals 4 squared plus x squared. If we do the math, so with the math laid out, let's see what we find out. If we do the Pythagorean theorem, we follow through on that standard. We work our way down until we get an answer of 3 root 3. Let me write it in, and you can see if that looks like something that maybe makes sense to you, connecting between these. In the middle term, um, if we do the same pattern, we do the Pythagorean theorem, and eventually we find that the answer to x is square root of 3, or 1 root 3. And then in the last case, uh, if we set up the Pythagorean theorem and work our way through, we get 4 square root of 3. Now I'm hoping, like in the other one, you see a bit of a pattern. Let's walk through the pattern and then we'll clean things up. So in this case, hypotenuse to short leg is double or half. Going this way, we either multiply by root 3 or divide it by root 3. Here we double and half, multiply by root 3 or divide by root 3 double and half, we multiplied by 3 or divided by 3. So to summarize that, let's do what we did kind of like with the other guy. Between these two, we're multiplying by 2 or dividing by 2. And to go between these guys, we're either going to multiply by root 3 or divide by root 3. Let's tuck this in the corner to help us out, and then let's bring in some new questions. So here's our short leg of 7. What I've learned is that going this way, I would double to be 14. Going this way, I would multiply by root 3, and so this would just be 7 root 3. I'm able to find these values because these are all 30, 60, 90 triangles. Here I have a hypotenuse of 10. So to go to the short leg, I would be dividing by 2, which is 5. And to go from this side to the long leg, I would multiply by the square root of 3. To see how quickly I'm able to get answers or move my way through this. In this case, I have a long leg of 8 root 3. I'm aware to go to the short leg, I would be dividing by the root 3, which just gives me 8. And then going to the hypotenuse would be double. So now I'm able to look at all three values. Let's keep going. Again, this is a 30, 60, 90, and have, what I have is the long leg. The connection between the long leg to the short leg is to divide or multiply by root 3. In this case, it would be to divide by the square root of 3, which happens to be 5 root 2. That number now gets used to become a multiplier to double to be 10 root 2 to be able to do such a thing. Let's keep going. In this case, I see that my uh, short leg is 2 root 5. To get my hypotenuse, I'm going to double that, so it would be 4 root 5. To get to the long leg, I'm going to multiply by root 3, which would be 2 square root of 15. And 15 doesn't break down any further. Let's look at one more here. 
Here I have a hypotenuse of 12 root 3. Again, notice the numbers don't matter. The truth is, to get to this side, I'm going to divide by root 3, which would be 6 root 3. Sorry, divide by 2, which is 6 root 3. And now I'm going to multiply by 6 root 3. Let's just take a minute to see what that looks like when we multiply by that. We would get 6 square root of 9, but this is 3, so that's 6 times 3 would be 18. Remember, my friends, my dear, dear friends, as we're moving between these two, we're multiplying by or dividing by root 3. And when we're moving between these two, we're multiplying or dividing by 2. One last set of trickies. I like the 45-45. There is a case where you got to do a little bit of mathematical work. Here's the long side. I'm going to go to the short side by dividing by the square root of 3. This would be 9 divided by square root of 3. You and I did a little review for this magical moment. This would be um, a value of square root of 9. This would be 3. And so actually, when you divide 9 by the square root of 3, you get 3 root 3. And then you know what to do to get y. We would double it to get 6 root 3. So a little bit of work there. But actually, you can kind of learn a shortcut, which I'll tell you in a second. Let's look at one last question. Here it is. Same kind of situation here. The long leg has a value of 21. To get to the short leg, we would divide by the square root of 3. And we learned a little workaround on this. That would be 21 root 3 over the square root of 9, which is the 21 root 3 over 3. And this just becomes 7 root 3. To get to the hypotenuse, we would double this at 14 root 3. Now let me give you just a, a quick summary of this guy, and let's get out of here. So this is our guy right here. You're either going to multiply by root 3 or divide by root 3. You're going to multiply by 2 or divide by 2. And it really all hinges on the short leg. Let me give you a, a cool shortcut to this. When you divide 9 by the square root of 3, you basically divide by 3, root 3. That is the answer to that. So if I had another number and it was, uh, let's see, we're just picking numbers, say 30 divided by root 3, it would be 30 divided by 3 would be 10 root 3. That's the way that that simplifies. Now, not everything divides by 3. So if you had, um, say, 10 root 3, it would be divide by 3, right? Root 3. That's what that would be. The same shortcut, by the way, happens with the square root of 2. When you're doing, um, if you're doing like 5 and dividing it by root 2, um, actually let's do 6 on the first question. If it was 6 divided by root 2, it's divide by 2, root 2 is what it is. So a nice little uh, catch. So if we had 12 root, uh, or 12, and we divided it by root 2, it would be divide by 2, root 2. The shortcuts, my friends, are when you're dividing by root 2, it's divide by 2, root 2. And when you're dividing by root 3, it's divide by 3, root 3. Good luck.